Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So what we have looked at is a smart village ecosystem framework and uh, uh, we are going to apply this to a village called uh, Pochampalli village which is uh, in on the state of Andhra Pradesh uh, which is near Hyderabad and uh, it is a village, it is a model village, we will look at what it is. It is a village with um, uh, occupants of weaving. And they are sari shop owners. They basically produce saris, which are women clothes, and uh, they are directly shop owners who are marketing this whatever is woven. And there is of course agriculture <coughs> and tardy tapping uh, and washing and fishing and basket weaving. So it's basically the, the if you look at the the ecosystem of this. It is an SME ecosystem. In other words, you have basket weaving to washing and tardy tapping and so on. So, basically, it is a it is agriculture, but uh, the agriculture is not rice or something, it is different. So, Pochampalli is a village 40 kilometers outside of Hyderabad called Bhutan Pochampalli. And uh, there is a, a great person called Acharya Vinabhabhave. And he started Bhutan movement uh, that is land donation from this village. That is why it is called Bhutan uh, Pochampalli. And uh, so famous for Pochampalli Ikat Thai and Dai Bivat. So there is a, an art, this is a dye of this one, and it is very, uh, very famous for making saris using this. And one IP writes from geography for in the geographical indications category equivalent of copyright or trademark. And Pochampilli is one of uh, UNDP's 36 rural tourism sites and is supported by Ministry of Tourism. <coughs> so you can see that the village is, is basically uh, a model village and it does, uh, it is famous for this weaving of the saris uh, which are basically died on this, this and then tick and tie, tick and tie we what. So, Pochampalli has uh, does more than 22 million annual business in terms of yarn sales, purchase of handloom products and sales. And the marketing is done through cooperative society APCO, Andhra Pradesh cooperative organization and the master weavers and the business houses in Pochampalli <coughs> and Pochampalli Weavers Association and their products online through pochampalli.com. So, there is a website called pochampalli.com and the products reach the market through various channels operated by the middleman. So, you can see that the Pochampalli village is well connected through the internet, it has online marketing and so on and it has a cooperative society. <coughs> Though there are vocational training institutes like Swami Ramananda Tirtham Rural Institute near Pochampalli, they do not cater <coughs> majority to the weaving community at Pochampalli strategically. So basically they, they, this is one of the problems with all the vocational training that one may have. It is a generalized training. They may they may train something, but it is not particularly suitable for uh, to train weavers in the in the uh, what is needed. <coughs> so, if you look at the smart village Pochampalli, here you have various service chains you can which we have mapped. Water, the water has the problem of defluoridation, defluoridation, and there is a vocational training which is required for weaving it is not done and retail and handicrafts, tourism, SMEs there is no microfinance and rural development schemes 
कॉस यूटिलिटीज हेल्थ केयर एफोर्डेबल हाउसिंग एंड एजुकेशन एजुकेशन इज is not this not very good so if you look at the institutions ministry of textiles chemicals and fertilizers and trade that's because these uh, smes which devnet is said they basically can export and trade regulations labor laws and so on uh, textile as applicable to textile apply apparel park technology upgradation schemes they are not whatever i have put in the red here there that means they are not being done and there is a village panchayat and citizens self help groups and so on so here if you look at what are the resources that are needed cotton silk fabric resources and there is in short supply water energy power resources and market research and domain specific research not much health care and e health records at district level of course that's not human resource at uid financial resources post office high school and other education levels at the discrete levels so you have power looms computer aided design is absent power looms computer aided design is absent at the hand weaving it and mobile networks are absent e commerce spoken web is absent procurement warehousing marketing for smes something happens e shopping happens so you can see that uh, our original ecosystem is after all that abstract you can see a, a thing like uh, pochampalli which is a model village has most of these attributes that we have i mean there are deficiencies and so on i mean one i would i would expect these deficiencies because it is not strategically planned now if you write a balanced score card for pochampalli as an exercise and look at what are all the strategic objectives of pochampalli you don't say that pochampalli should become there is no objective that it should become the best sari for this particular art in the world and it should not be they don't follow the green strategies here that's because the water because of the dye the water gets spoiled and also is this going to be some some art which they are going to distribute it to the world and so on and try to take the responsibility become an orchestrator and ask other villagers also villagers also to follow this and also the current generation of the people are interested in the hand weaving and all that what about the next generation the next generation may not be uh, uh, interested in weaving and even if they are interested they may want to make it big with power looms and and computer aided design and so on so in other words it's a, it's an art which is this one how long will they last last uh, art last to to be this today it is it is a very good village but what about the future so how do you want to keep whatever is the is the place that pochampalli village has in the future as well that's the big question that we have so the, that kind of thing is not answered and people are happy with what it is today so but i mean there are two points that i want to make from this one thing is the ecosystem map of smart village follows our ecosystem map that we have already so this example substantiates that our ecosystem map is not as abstract as we think and also there are some the red marks indicate that uh, there these things should be strategically planned and that is the deficiency in the pochampalli system now so what are the recommendations from the ecosystem the pochampalli is claimed as one of the model villages by the tourism department our analysis finds that there are no strategic growth orientation that's the big thing that we find so what is the strategy what is that you want to make it out of this village current focus is on sarees and local markets but that competencies are but their competencies are in design so please understand that you have competency in design what should you do you should spread the design and get it to the markets in other places so that's your competency you should start and have several with different villages and now point and check into one village should focus on other dresses men women and children 
both Indian and foreign and linked to the global value chain that does not exist. So, they make saris and sell it in all retail places and through intermediaries and so on and that is one of the uh, things. So, there is no growth plan. Second thing that protecting the heritage, the occupation and skill of weaving Pochampalli saris by training people in other villages and encouraging more innovation rather than keeping it in house. So, this is one of the things that uh, you know why should you make only uh, the saris in those villages. What is your competency and what is that you want to protect? You want to protect the design and not the manufacture, not the weaving. So, you can keep the design to yourself, but spread it to other villages and so that you have more marketing. Vocational skills are the latest advances in design and weaving automation and environmentally friendly techniques. So, here when you are using dyes, one has to be careful. It basically uh, uh, ruins all the water levels in the ground. Governance follows classical panchayat model supported by the government and UN agencies and is not entrepreneurial and this need to change. So, these are some of the very high level recommendations that we have by looking at uh, the Pochampalli, uh, Pochampalli ecosystem. So, I mean this particular case study we did is it uh, shows us two things. One is the uh, the applicability of our ecosystem approach to a village and second thing is you know can it uh, can it uh, make recommendations to them looking at uh, their existing ecosystem what they are doing and so on so that's this basically is a uh, is the thing that we have here so let us look at the uh, the uh, the village ecosystem and what are the conclusions that we have before we proceed to the city ecosystems. There is no denying fact that we need smart villages. I mean you have 600,000 of them and uh, 200,000 of them are backward and so on. So, basically the making the villages smart this is the biggest challenge facing the all developing countries today. I mean it is not only in India it is it is true with China it is true with uh, this one. But if you can have a, a very popular easy way of developing this with technologies and make the villages independent republics uh, according to Mahatma's vision. I think that will lead to the prosperity of the world. The technology is available. I mean if you look at what is that that we are asking? We are not asking big things. There are technologies available. There are technologies available and uh, uh, and they are successful elsewhere, you know, particularly in the uh, uh, in the cities. But the failure comes from lack of strategy, integrated planning, and above all, monitoring and execution of the activities. So, in other words, whatever technologies we have which is applicable, we are not asking for uh, new technology development and so on, but we want to uh, apply these technologies and so on, I mean, but it has to be applied strategically. We need to develop ecosystem for each village and city depending on its location and investment climate. This is one of the strategic exercises that one need to do. They can be replicated to millions of villages and towns around the world and this is in line with the inclusive growth initiatives. So, if you are talking of inclusive growth, see one thing is to transfer all the people from the villages to the world, to the uh, urban areas, but then that will crowd the urban areas and uh, this one. But another thing is to, to uh, move the work or move the improvements to the village where people live, that is what it is. And the biggest stumbling block is the legacy infrastructure. So, basically the, the chain challenge that everybody faces in, the, in terms of this is the, the problems with the legacy infrastructure and also the attitude of the people to live with what we have and so on. So, having done this 
uh, let us look at now uh, the smart city applying the same kind of framework uh, from <coughs> the uh, village in the stuff village to a smart city. So, let us look at the smart city. The, as we said, I am not going through this one that uh, we can map this like we did map the village, uh, uh, the service chains, the resources, the institutions and delivery, service delivery technologies here. And <coughs> the same kind of as in the village we have water, power, healthcare, retail and public transportation, housing, security sewage, garbage treatment, education and entrepreneurship and so on in the even in the even in the city. But <coughs> in terms of resources you have uh, uh, this land, water, business development, industry clusters. So, you have in the city industry clusters, you have infrastructure, roads, airports and rails, you have human resources, financial resources like big banks and universities and research institutions. You have universities and research institutions here. So, you can have hospitals, um, you can add hospitals as infrastructure here. But if you look at uh, the um, regulations, the in institutions, of course, there are regulations and policy makers. I mean central state governments, municipal corporations, they are the ones who rule the uh, the city, citizen groups and social activities and other business organizations. So, the, the complexity here increases because you have the industry here, you have research organizations and you have more infrastructure like uh, airports and so on. And of course, the service delivery comes from uh, the call centers uh, you to basically deliver either health or something, e-kiosk and e-retail that is one thing that you may not have in the villages also Pochampali has e-retail, but uh, you can have it. You should you can have food courts, distribution centers, IT communication networks and transport. So, here the, the basic ecosystem <coughs> is the, the same as as in the as in the village, but it is more complex. So, the complexity comes from a yeah, size because the it is size I mean it is several villages which are put together and second thing is it comes because there is industry in here and there are educational institutions which are big which where all the villages and other small towns people come here and of course, the, the water network and uh, the power networks the consumption in the city is much more. So, there are the complexity of these utility networks. So, given this kind of uh, uh, structure that we have then you know what are the kinds of things that we can do in a village. So, the largest why are, why are we talking about this? So, largest urban migration in history happens each week nearly one and a half million people move to cities almost all in developing markets. More than 70 million people are crossing the threshold to middle class each year all in emerging markets. So, in the so called emerging markets, BRIC countries, uh, India, China, Russia and so on, what is happening is the, the, the middle class range is increasing with the population and then you know middle class means uh, transportation, middle class means communication, this one middle class means retail, all these services uh, become uh, huge requirements. And also the other one is there is the urban migration, people are moving for their jobs and so on. So, by the end of 2020 roughly 40 percent of the world population will be middle class, today it is 20 percent. So, you can see the scale of services that are needed in the cities because the uh, because of this what is happening here. So, by the end of the decade roughly 40 percent of the world population will be middle class, urban poor need food, housing and others. So, you can have even in the urban areas in the city 25 percent of the people are poor people. So, they require nutritious food and they require housing and others. And to tap these new markets organizations must reinvent business models, 
innovate new products and services and build smart cities. So, the the objective here is uh, you know looking at the ecosystem. You need to plan the the ecosystem carefully. All cities are not the same. If you take some cities may have IT industry, some cities may have automobile industry, and some cities uh, may have uh, some other uh, kind of industries. But whatever, depending on that, uh, you have to plan and innovate. So, if you unbundle a city into various parts, there that becomes important for in terms of our design. You have a smart living city. In other words, you have a living city where people live. I mean, it is it's only uh, 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 with homes and so on. And you have smart industrial tech city. So, it is an industrial city if it is automobile or uh, uh, or uh, such kind of uh, industries uh, or biotech and so on or it could be a tech city like if you have only IT parks, smart SC jets, special economic zones. Uh, these are the innovations of the governments where they get uh, the people get a lot of shops uh, when they organize this and you have smart universities educational institutions where a lot of people come and they stay and they need accommodation, they need the classrooms and so on. And they are smart medi cities, you know medical uh, this one hospitals and so on. So, basically the village contains all this. So, today you know things grow at a uh, ad hoc manner and so on. Is it possible to, uh, to unbundle the smart city and you have to basically looking at each of them you have to they have their own ecosystem and uh, industry has its own ecosystem, SAJ has its own ecosystem, universities have their own ecosystems and many centers have their own ecosystems. You have to design all of them properly. Each of the above in a smart city can be considered as a smart village and can be developed using the above mentioned ecosystem. So, what I am saying is you know look at what we did earlier and can you develop these as uh, as a uh, as an ecosystem that we have so what we have here is the the smart city and start smart city development is i mean like a village we treated as a bundle of services so we are treating a smart city as uh, as as a bundle of villages. Now, each village is need not have to be the same thing as uh, uh, as the village earlier. It can be a living village, it can be an industry village, it can be a smart SCJ, it can be a university and so on. Now, how do you plan all this and of course, later you have to integrate all this together into a big uh, uh, industry. So, STEM frameworks uh, and analyze through grip models. So, you have to apply the STEM framework that is the science, technology, engineering, uh, regulations and policies and management. That framework you apply and analyze through using grip framework. You can basically analyze like we analyzed uh, the, uh, the village using grip framework, you can analyze a city using the grip framework. So, if you if you look at what do we have here, what we have is the ecosystem of a of a smart city, and then now we are unbundling the city into several smart parts, smart villages kind of thing. And depending on their characteristics, and if one is a living one, another one is an industry, another one is a special economic zone, another one is a university, another is one is a hospital and or and so on. So, depending on what you have here, you can you can basically design. Now you can have the grip framework and all that. So we should we should see how how this analysis, the ecosystem analysis helps in terms of uh, 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 building a smart city. So, ecosystem need to be built for each of these services 
all the service sectors need to be given attention to make them smart and we briefly what we do here is to is to talk of two uh, ecosystem uh, ecosystem of two uh, sectors one is healthcare and is the university and others can be done similarly. So, we are going to talk about the smart healthcare and smart universities and, uh, and leave it to that and you can you can do as an exercise uh, smart SHS and uh, smart living cities and smart industrial cities and so on. So, uh, what is the healthcare ecosystem? Yes. So, if you look at smart healthcare ecosystem this what are the service chains that are involved in a healthcare ecosystem that is for example, primary community public healthcare right. So, this is the, the cough cold and then uh, getting vaccinations and so on and all that and there is this multi speciality healthcare cardiac problems and other uh, surgeries. There is the emergency health care where of course, they are also done by the health care, but you should have vehicles to transport patients in case of accidents, in case of uh, uh, any emergencies that arise like cardiac arrest and so on. So, mobile and rural health care camps, in other words, you have to conduct the camps in the, uh, in the, in the rural areas or nearby to the city to conduct uh, these camps vaccination and immunization this is a, a, a big thing, but because uh, for children the vaccination is a big camps or a big thing and of course, there are diagnostic centers where you conduct various tests, blood tests, uh, ECGs and all that. Tele, telemedicine, medical tourism and then there is a lot of people to the villages particularly in, a, in emerging markets because the healthcare costs are cheaper than the than the developed markets there is the medical tourism that happens and a lot of uh, patients from advanced countries they come to India, Singapore and so on for getting medical help and a medical insurance schemes yes and then of course, in countries like India 90 percent of the people pay for themselves. But in most countries, even in India, the middle class and others who are working their medical insurance schemes. So, this is one of the uh, big issues that about the insurance and so on. Facilities for companions of patients. See, if you have a child hospital, the child's children won't come alone, they come with the parents. So, basically you have to provide service facilities for, for the for the parents and so on. Supposing the world people come, they come with their children. So, the, the issue is that the patient never comes alone. He comes either with his spouse or he comes <coughs> with his parents or children. So, basically it is be better to serve all this. So, you can see the number of service chains when you are talking of a smart health care. It is not just having a, having a hospital or a uh, or a clinic and then just doing those, but you have to basically have several clinics uh, from there are multi speci multiple specialities that are possible. So, if you are having a city and within the city there are several people of various kinds with various industries with various under various insurance schemes, then there are several hospitals which are providing these kind of care and several diagnostic centers and so on. So, that is one thing and then if you look at what are the resources that are needed general for this, the medical colleges and research institutions. So, usually big hospitals have medical colleges. So, the students are trained with this and also there are research institutions um, for this, the laboratories and diagnostic centers. Training and skill development workshops. So, because as things change, I mean, the, these these workshops are becomes financial resources. Of course, these financial resources they could be funding the uh, funding the hospitals. They can be funding the uh, uh, some of the equipment that they have, and and also 
the insurance services that is infrastructure medical equipment they become this. So, if you take a typical big hospital then almost like 80 percent goes into the hospital building and about 10 percent goes into the medical facilities. So, infrastructure and equipment are the big costs and of course, you should have the trained manpower which are the human resources who are the doctors, nurses and so on. So, once you have all this then you know tra training uh, for all this you can see the cosmic view of uh, for all these kind of services what are the kinds of resources that you need. And of course, in healthcare is one of the highly regulated industry very right. There are lots of regulations, there are regulations in, in terms of what information can you share <coughs> without uh, you can and of course, there are the policy makers in this and uh, the central state governments, medical associations, public private hospitals, insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies and so on. So, the medicines ultimately have to come from the pharmaceutical companies. So, you have you have to basically have this. So, you can see how many associations are involved and they have rules regulations for all this. And if you are basically dealing with uh, with patients from other countries in a country then these regulations multiply. And the delivery services, emergency services, uh, emergency uh, vans and so on and diagnostic centers, wellness centers and hospitals, cloud with connectivity to all the medical centers. You know the data records that uh, has to be have a connectivity and of course, telemedicine and so on. The telemedicine could be a delivery service which here. So, you have to have uh, the various kinds of uh, delivery services that are there. So, this is the uh, the cosmic view of uh, uh, the big picture of the smart healthcare ecosystem. Now, the, the, the you can see that the, the smartness of the healthcare system comes from several factors here. One thing is it can be in terms of the cloud and collectivity of all the medical centers. It can be then with the diagnostic centers there when you take x-rays, ECGs and so on instead of taking the paper copies most of them have e-copies and which can be emailed and stored and so on instead of uh, emailing the uh, instead of storing the physical. Uh, co copies and these all these for a particular patient you can have health records. So, all these can be stored in a health records and you can have regulations on these health records when they can be shared and where, when they can be taken out and when they cannot be when they cannot be given and so on. So, the, the issue here is how do you make it smart the insurance companies when they when now today physically to when somebody is sick to get, to get the permissions you could do it almost by phone and by sending uh, whatever is the initial uh, estimates of uh, the health care and get permissions from the insurance companies. So, in other words you could the part of these these implementations the smart implementations are happening even today there is no doubt about that. But if you want to make them better and then transfer this across the board to other hospitals other this one and create a, a, a universal healthcare record system where all the patient records are this one they are accessible at, at, at uh, these points of time and that is the one that one should one should have to aim here. So, this is a in very interesting and, uh, and very useful and very important subject which is the smart healthcare building a smart healthcare. So, there uh, I think um, of course, there are uh, initiatives from several people uh, like uh, you know in the in the US there is the uh, uh, e-records health records and so on, but health records is only a part of this exercise that we are dealing with here. In this we are we are talking of not only creating the records, 
not only but their accessibility and also the delivery i mean ultimately it is not the record count counts it's the health care that the patient gets at the time of emergency this one why do you want to create a record you want to create a record so that in an emergency situation of a heart attack or an accident so the patient's background can be checked and it can be accessed so that the correct kind of service is given in the emergency situation so for that kind of thing you know one has to have a unified view of the entire ecosystem of the healthcare so city healthcare system is an example of system of systems so let us get into some theory here it is patients to diagnostic centers wellness centers hospitals r and d labs and universities and so on it's each is a system by itself what is a system system has an input and output and it has uh, some people and a governance mechanisms and so on and you have a system of systems which are basically from patient when he enters till he comes out uh, with the diagnosis and cured then he goes through the system of subsystems and they are all connected and if the connectivity of these systems of systems is the one that is very important here that is what the ecosystem is saying that ecosystem has all these facilities diagnostic centers to everything r and d labs universities and so on as the patient enters you now he has if he has the patient has a disease which is not known today is it possible for the lab centers something like h1n1 or a different virus that that hits the patient is then it has go to r and d labs if the patient has some kind of a, a peculiar uh, dna and some medicines don't work and is it possible to get into personalized medicines and so on so basically it is uh, the uh, city healthcare system is a system of systems they should be connected logistically and should be able to share information in other words it's possible from the patient should be able to move from from one place to another and patient's files should be able to move share and information from one to another so today the connection is done by the patient he goes to the diagnostic center gets the diagnostics and then he takes it to the, the to the doctor again and he writes the prescription he goes to the pharmacy gets the medicines and so on and then which is good i mean if as long as it is streamlined but is it possible that the information is also shared in a unified uh, this one and the government should be followed generally is a cooperative society now when you have a hospital of this kind of the healthcare system what is the kind of governance model that we talked about the village we talked about several things what is the governance model that is in other words is there a lead player i mean if it is a big hospital one of those uh, apollo or something then it can be a lead player but all others all also this one but these are all shared services and each is an independent diagnostic center is independent telehealth medicine is independent and the pharmacies are independent so there becomes a network and this network what is the kind of governance model we have considered three kinds of governance models one is the orchestrator uh, this one second one is the lead player this one a third one is a cooperative society so in the healthcare sector the most popular model is the cooperative society model that means all the players inside they basically form a network a cooperative society and they elect a board and with a chairman and so on and this keeps changing i mean the elections could be every year every two years or whatever so that is about the uh, uh, the healthcare system let's look at another important uh, 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 service that the city provides that's the university ecosystem now in the university ecosystem what we have is again uh, 
So, this one I am looking at uh, a university which has uh, undergraduate programs. The programs or services or the offers graduate programs, postgraduate programs, executive programs, correspondence programs, research and development. Now, I mean you can have several others uh, here, but uh, this is a typical. You now, if it is an undergraduate program, so it can be undergraduate in science, in accountancy, in arts, uh, it can be in engineering, it can be in medicine, depending on the kind of university system you have. If you have a, a, a niche university called engineering, like Indian Institute of Technology and so on, then you have only undergraduate engineering. But if you have a, a university which is a white uh, university, okay, you have all kinds of programs. And similarly, you have graduate programs that is the masters in science, masters in engineering and so on. You have postgraduate programs for PhDs, PhD in engineering, PhD in, in science, PhD in accounting, whatever. And you have executive programs for you have depending on the connections that you have with the industry, you want to run executive training programs. Uh, these are uh, these are short programs, say uh, one week, two week, one month, two month, depending on what it is, or it can be one day, two day. There are programs for the executives in the industry. This one. These are training programs uh, to keep in touch with uh, what is happening in the industry. And there are correspondence programs. That is, people need not have to attend the college, but um, they can. Uh, come and write the exams, but they are registered partners here and they do online training through postal, postal this one or online they attend online programs. There could be research on, there is research and development, I mean this could be uh, research universities, there are several research universities which does not teach at all. So, but on the other hand, research is an integral part of any university whether it is an engineering university or it is a medical university uh, and uh, whether it is social sciences research or engineering research whatever you have research as an integral part of this. So, you have various kinds of programs in the research and most of the big universities they have they have social sciences, they have engineering, they have medicine, they have science and so on everything is, is integrated under one. Now, if you look at what are the kinds of resources that you need, of course, you need faculty which are resident and visiting and you need staff to take care of uh, the administration. You need centers of excellence where basically, you know, if you are having a research and development program and if some industry has a center, there are centers of excellence formed and basically to conduct the research using niche research for those. I mean, this can be for example, the research in cancer uh, in in the uh, medical this one or it can be research on cloud computing in the computer science or it can be a new materials uh, centers uh, for, the, for the material science departments. So, depending on that you can have centers of excellence and you can have this uh, supporting departments or supporting universities which uh, uh, this one university ecosystem is not just the same universities, you can be mentoring, supporting other uh, universities, you can be having links with other universities, you can have faculty which are who are visiting, who are taking sabbat sabbaticals and so on. So, it becomes our, you can go to a central agency uh, department to for combined finding and so on. So, they are basically uh, supporting library, of course, camper facilities. Now, online libraries or now uh, of course, there is security. There is banks. Banks are important, a for giving loans to the students, and b uh, of course for any cash transactions that happen on the facility. So, they're basically the resources that are needed in this. And you have governance board and executive board that. Uh, the university has, every university has a governing board, government regulations and policies. These are policies uh, for each of these undergraduate, postgraduate and so on. If you have your undergraduate programs, how many years of program is, if it is in a discipline, how many courses and, and so on. So, there are several uh, things which are routine as well as special. If you are running a PhD program, what, what should be, what should be the kind of assessment of the PhD program and all. They are recruiting agencies. Ultimately, university produces people. 
and these people have to be employed. And in fact, one of the measures that uh, that people employ to find out the greatness of a university, how good a university is, is the employment uh, character or the employment uh, history of its graduates. So you have alums uh, with this one, particularly if you have management institutions, the alums play a big role and also the management institutions, they are ranking their ranking uh, by uh, the companies, it depends on how well your and alums are doing and also their donors for the universities because it is easy, it is not easy to get donors but uh, sometimes you can get donors who are alums if they are doing very well, have big industries to get the money for the university. So, but then all of them have a say in the university ecosystem. And of course, they are integrating technologies or uh, delivery technologies. This is media support for online education. This is one thing you can you use TV to support online and there is a communication department, face to face classrooms, seminars, workshops and so on and e-classrooms, webinars and of course, inter-university transportation, transportation inside and outside of this. So, what, what we have here is a big ecosystem that of the, of the university that we have. Now, this is as I said, this is the university, all encompassing university, it is not a niche university, it is not a business school, it is not a medical school, it is not an engineering school, it is the one that, that compasses all this kind of thing. So, when you have such a, such a university of this, what is the difference? How do you make it a smart university? Well, you can see the smart media support for online education. You can have uh, all the transactions that happen through uh, this one. All the class notes are given on iPads or computers online and all the library is online. So, here classrooms, webinars, you need not have to attend the class, you can watch this using TV in your house. So, this provides lot of uh, this one to the correspondence programs. If you are working and you, you want to doing a part time degree, then it to commute may be difficult. So, that is what you do here. So, plan campuses with digital technologies, dominant university model is asset intensive with classrooms, libraries, etc. and this needs a redesign. Now, if you look at a very dominant university model, they have classrooms. What is the uh, occupancy of these classrooms? How long? What is the percentage of usage of these classrooms? Not very much, 10 percent, 20 percent and so on, but each classroom is an asset and they spend a lot of money on this. On the other hand, you know, can you make e-classrooms? Digital campus with e-classrooms, video conferencing facilities, online facilities, broadcasting facilities or the need of the hour so that they can be used for online courses. Degree education in the university of the future would be via media channels. So, this is, this is going to be one of the big changes that happens. So, I mean there, there could be several repercussions of this. How do you, you see a student? in the class day in and day out, you teach him, you know him, you know his behavior and so on. But if you are doing e-classrooms, then of course, you see him from a distance uh, on the other side of the channel and you, you correspond with him and so on. But then at the end of the day, you see him when there is an examination or something and then you have to assess him. So, this is the kind of thing and is change in the in the this one and also the universities have to integrate with the universities. So, ultimately who are the employers of, of your university? I mean the university is not an independent thing by itself. Although the government gives you, governments may give you money and so on, the, uh, the top tier university should be a breeding ground for technology innovations need to hold, build significantly deeper relations with industry and organize higher degree research programs in partnership with industry. So, two things should happen to the university, it should be the starting point 
and also it should be the end point for its students. It should be the starting point for innovation. And research commercialization can become a core strength, a source of funding for the university programs. Technologically innovative, socially relevant research is in need of the hour in this and encourage startups with industry mentoring. So, that is the integration in the universities that we have. And of course, you know, to end this lecture, I would like to uh, talk about uh, the third service revolution in this. In other words, what we are trying to do here is to redesign villages, redesign the cities and redesign uh, uh, the university systems, redesign the uh, uh, the healthcare systems. So, I have I have taken two important services of uh, healthcare and university inside the city and I told the how to how to do this. So, if you want to design a, uh, a smart city, you could use this and then and then design the smart city. Now, all this lead to what is called third service revolution. What is the first? The first service revolution was led by growth of standards of living and the retail sector. In other words, people have increased this, this one and then uh, they wanted more products, uh, they wanted more communication, they wanted telephones, they wanted uh, protein rich food and all that and that is how the third first revolution came and retail has been a big hit of the first. The second one was driven by globalization and outsourcing where the talents and di are diverted to improve the service and manufacturing sectors of the western countries. In other words, people wanted this globalization to improve their this one. So, the third one is we need the third service revolution which concentrates on services manufacturing and agriculture in emerging markets. Streamline upgrade service chains using modern technologies, make them smart. Initiate education, research and entrepreneurial programs in service sector innovation. Well, you cannot just make them smart, you have to re-engineer what is existing. So, that requires research. Re-innovate manufacturing and agriculture using recent advantages in services. This is a very important thing because you now for example, in the manufacturing and agriculture, the services that are needed in terms of power, water, human labor man, uh, and so on are, are immense. They are not independent of the services, marketing to uh, to retailing everything. If you make them, if you want to reinvent them to make uh, be using the recent advantages, improve the investment climate, plan and build integrated service systems, systems of systems such as smart cities, SCJs and so on. So, basically we need to develop services system science and engineering using ICT technology, sensor networks generating big data and we need analytics with predictive and governance models with database decision making techniques for better operations and executing. So, ultimately whether it is a village, whether it is healthcare, whether it is a city or something, what is that that requires? You have to analyze the service system, you have to engineer the system using ICT technologies and use the sensor in this one and improve the system using the uh, using the database decision making technologies and use the governance models for plan and execute the systems. So, that is what it is. So, I think in this uh, two lectures uh, what we did was we have applied whatever we have learned for industry supply chains to in a larger context of villages and cities, healthcare and universities. That is where I think this lecture gains a lot of importance in terms of the generality of the ecosystem approach that we have developed. So, you should be able to use this uh, information to map your own, eco your own uh, industry ecosystem, uh, your own village ecosystem, your own city ecosystem or a service ecosystem you are in and then see how you can improve that.